Hey everybody, oh gosh. Hey everybody, it's Nathaniel Avila reporting from Greater Orlando and I'm joined with Timbro Hildebrand reporting from Corelli, Texas. And uh, we're going to be talking about Aladdin, is that right? That's right. All right, so this is going to be pretty awesome. What did you think of the film? Oh, I love this movie. It's one of my, it might be my favorite Disney movie. Yeah, I agree. It's one of my favorite films. Uh, I watched it a lot when I was a kid. That's cool. Yeah. Um, all right. So a little backstory about uh, this film. It, the story started in uh, back in 1988, where a lyricist named Howard Ashman pitched the idea of an animated musical adaptation of Aladdin from like the 40 like the legend of the 40 thieves and all that kind of stuff arabian nights i mean and uh ashman had wrote written like a 40 page film treatment uh remaining faithful to the plot of that original story uh but it was envisioned as like a 1930s campy style musical uh with like a cab calloway fats waller uh like personality for the genie uh and he was uh, partnered with another guy named Alan Menken, uh, who helped. Oh, love Alan Menken. Oh yeah, so he helped uh, conceive several songs and added uh, the friends, uh, like three friends for Aladdin, named Babcock, Omar, and Kasim. Oh my goodness! In the stage version, those characters are actually in it. Yeah, I know. I was yeah. I didn't realize. I didn't realize they were an original thing for the movie. I thought they just added those for the stage version. Yeah. Uh, Yep, they were. The, I think that's where they got the idea to add those characters for the stage version. Oh my version. goodness, that's awesome! Yeah, in the stage version, they have one of my favorite songs. Oh yeah, I I saw it last. I saw the stage version last uh, June. I think it was last June. And, oh cool! It's really good. Yeah, I had a lot of fun watching it. And so I think they replaced. They ended up cutting them them from the film film and replaced them with a poo. I mean a boo. So, uh. However, the studio, um, they didn't really like Ashman's treatment, and they kind of just, like, removed it from development, uh, and they just put Ashman and Mankin to, uh, compose the songs for Beauty and the Beast, uh, and, uh, oh, uh, and this other guy, this other person named, uh, Linder Hooverton, who was also working on, uh, Beauty and the Beast at the time, uh, saw their draft, like their, their, uh, treatment. Uh, and she was also inspired from like an old 1930s film, I believe called the thief of Baghdad. Oh, it was 1940s, uh, called the thief of Baghdad and took a lot of like inspired events from that film, such as, uh, the villain, a villain named Jafar, uh, uh -huh. except there's a comma in between the Jaff and the far. So it's different. <laughs> so, um, and also, uh, a psychic, a, ret a human, uh, a, a psychic named Abu, but the Abu is a, a human, and uh, a human handmaiden for the princess, who I don't think was actually who was actually implemented in the 2019 version. Uh, she was. She was in the 2019 version. Yeah. Uh, so, and then they got the directors Ron Clemens and John Musker to join the production, and uh, they were actually. They had to pick three, three films, like three scripts, like three film ideas, and they picked Aladdin out of the three. Uh, the other two being a musical adaptation of Swan Lake, and the other one being a film called King of the Jungle, which would eventually become The Lion King. Uh, so uh, before uh, Ashman died in 1991, uh, him and Mankin composed a film called, uh, I mean, uh, the the song Prince Ali and his last song called Humiliate the Boy. Uh, so Musker and Clemens both wrote a draft of the screenplay and delivered the story reel to the uh, uh, chairman at the time, Jeffrey Katzenberg, in April of 1991. And Katzenberg thought the script didn't engage. <clears throat> and we'll be hearing a lot from Katzenberg. I personally am not a fan because I think he, I think he's not that good of a guy. But we'll be continuing. Uh, because oh, what in the world? What in the world was that? Was that you? Oh, I didn't hear anything. 
Oh, that was there was a giant beeping. Okay. Oh, well, that wasn't me. Okay. Um. Anyway, so Katzenberg just demanded that the entire story just be rewritten, and of in a fateful day they that was known as Black Friday. Uh. Without rescheduling the film release of July of November twenty fifth, and so now everybody had to like completely rework it like uh, like crunch it uh and so katzenberg requested like a bunch of different revisions of clements and musker and the, he did not want them to be dependent on the ashman on ashman's treatment of the film so they removed like a bunch of stuff like uh aladdin's mom they cut that out and yeah. and uh he got uh, Ted Elliott and Terry Rossio, uh, Rossio to rework the story. Uh, the changes they made were included in, uh, uh, let me see. Oh, and they also like strengthened the character of Princess Jasmine and they, uh, but unfortunately they did have to remove several of, uh, Mencken's songs. Uh, so that was a little, little sad, but, uh, Aladdin's personality was then rewritten to be a bit like cuz he was originally supposed to be like a like like a younger version like a young Harrison Ford that's what his personality was supposed to be like and mm-hmm. and they added the character of Iago uh I love Iago yeah and he was actually conceived as like uh he was originally supposed to be like an uptight british archetype yeah that's what he was supposed to be but they decided to change it after they saw uh, Gilbert Gottfried in Beverly Hills Cop 2. So they changed it to fit around that personality. And they actually got Gilbert Gottfried to play the character, uh, which was pretty cool. Uh, and then finally, Katzenberg was finally satisfied with that version of Aladdin. And uh, and then they decided to, like, then they, like, made the character, the uh decided that it was going to be a, a fictional city called Agraba because originally it was originally supposed to be Baghdad but they decided to call uh, like a new city and then everything was made and that's the history of Aladdin. Mm, cool. Yeah. So what are our initial thoughts of it? Um I think it's very entertaining as an adventure story. I think they have compelling characters and interesting romance. They balance funny and serious fairly well. I mean, I think it's just, it's a well-rounded, fun family Disney movie. Oh, yeah. Uh, what do you think about the genie in this film? Oh, how can you not like the genie? It's Robin Williams. Like, even people who hate the movie like what Robin Williams. Yes, absolutely. Like, he improved like, a, like 80% of his lines in this film. Yeah. And, uh... But I know that he actually and they ended up, he ended up getting like a huge fight with Disney because of this film, uh, because he did not want Disney to market his name uh, on any of the promotional material, and then Disney was like, "Yeah, no, we're not gonna do that." And he also didn't want uh, genie merchandise to be made, uh, but Disney was like, "Yeah, sure, we'll totally do that," and then they they totally didn't. And then they, they marketed the heck out of it. So that, and then after, and then uh, Williams was really mad at him. And then he was very vocal about how much he did not like Disney. He swore that he would never work with them again. Oh, wow, that's terrible. Oh yeah, uh, and I know that I know that he really disliked Katzenberg, the guy from earlier. So much that he, I remember when he got, uh, when he won his uh, Golden Globe for the role of the genie, he called uh, Katzenberg Katzenbug. Hmm. Lol. So, luckily, uh, when Katzenberg was fired, I don't remember, I don't remember if he got fired or left, but after he left Disney, uh, his predecessor ended up just apologizing. And then he made, they made good. And Williams accepted it, and that's when he he returned to play the genie in uh, the third film, The Prince of Thieves, I think. Mm, okay, interesting. 
Yeah. And uh, so, okay, so what do you think that this film says about freedom? Um, I mean, I guess it's, I guess one of the themes is that um, what our, our own personal ideas of what freedom looks like may not be actually what we want because we built it up in an ideal way in our brain and then once we actually get there, kind of like how Jasmine got out there and then she realized that things weren't quite the way she like always dreamed it would be she didn't see the bad side of that the way aladdin had seen it and aladdin thought luxury was all he could ever want and jasmine knew the shortcomings of that so i guess it's the sort of that grass is always greener kind of thing which can be deceptive yes and uh what do you think that you think aladdin figured out that being rich isn't all that all that's that that's not important when he became like a prince and everything yeah, because uh, when uh, Jasmine rejected him, uh, it showed him that she didn't care for riches and stuff, and that riches isn't, like, the big thing. And I feel that the genie personifies both of their desires for freedom, because that that's that was his main motivation, was to be free. Hmm. And, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Um... So, do you think Jasmine uh, showed girl power in this film? I mean, I guess it depends on your definition of girl power. I mean, uh, she's not really the leading character in this movie. I mean, the movie's called Aladdin. It's not actually supposed to... It's not actually mainly about uh, Jasmine. So, I would not I would say that she probably feels more of the damsel in the stress type of, um, not, not even so much a damsel in distress, but just kind of like more of a side love, more of the love interest character than so much of an active, uh, I guess an active hero-like character, but I still think she's a fairly strong character because she's so staunch in how she's not going to be sold off, like, to a man, you know, and stuff like that, so, I mean, I still say she, she's a fairly strong character, but also this movie isn't mainly about her. So you don't get to see as much of that due to her, the nature of her character. Yeah. And there's also that one scene where she scolds uh, Aladdin, the Sultan, and Jafar for deciding things for her mm -hmm. as well. So that kind of like shows her independence or her desire to be independent. Uh, yeah. And do you think the Sultan is a good ruler? Yeah, I definitely liked it. Oh, and you said that um, you really enjoyed the character of Iago, is that right? Oh, yeah, I love Iago. He's a nice, I mean, he's not a huge character, but the couple of times he's on screen, like, I can't get enough of him. He's hilarious. And it's because it's that actor, you know, uh, Godfrey, who's playing him. He's just great. Oh, so, yeah. He's a very, so, yeah, very I good. can never get enough of him. He's great. Yeah, and then I, I know he ends up, Iago ends up redeeming himself and becomes, like, one of the good guys in the in Return of Jafar, which is, like, the second film. Oh, uh, well, I've never seen that. Oh, uh, well, it, you're not missing out much. It's not that great. Well, that's why I haven't seen it. <laughs> and, um, so, yeah, and then, uh, I know that Iago is supposed to be, it was, like, a direct reference to, like, a Shakespeare character. Uh, yeah. who was also in the other? Yes, that's right. And do you think there's like any parallels between between those two characters? I mean, I wouldn't say so because you don't see him. He's definitely not the brains of the operation or looking to actively betray his partner. I think it's just they wanted to use that name because it connects to a bad guy character. Yes, that's right. Um uh, what do you think of Aladdin, by the way? Is, was he a cool guy? Was he a good dude? Oh, I absolutely love Aladdin. He's probably my favorite male, you know, old school Disney character. He's funny, he's got flaws, but he's also, he's very, like, kind, and you can, hear, you can tell he cares about Jasmine, he's smart, you know? But, um, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun, I think. I, I like, I like Aladdin. He's, he's a, he's a cool character. Yeah, I, th I like how he doesn't have any nipples. <laughs> okay. Am I right? So. Well, I mean, just the design. 
Yeah. Uh, and um, so, yeah, there's this whole thing about uh, the grass being always greener and then it's not always what it's cracked up to be. And I think that's one of like the main themes of Aladdin, which which is a pretty nice message, I would say. Would you agree? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, so there are some theories of this film that I'd like to run by you that see if you think that they're true or not. Uh, the first one is that the genie is actually the merchant from the beginning. Oh, yeah. I think, I mean, I'm, I think that makes sense because same i mean rob williams is playing the merchant at the beginning and that makes sense because he's telling the story of the movie <laughs> yeah we actually don't see the merchant again until the end of the third film which which uh bookmarks the entire trilogy um and i think uh he was they're also the only two characters that has four fingers as well and <laughs> yeah yeah and i think uh musker and clemens did confirm that that's true so that is true. Um, there's this other theory that Aladdin takes place in this post-apocalyptic universe and that the only society that survived was the uh, Arabic society and that's why that's there. Yeah, I think that's a dumb theory. <laughs> really? But how yeah. else How else would the genie know all those pop culture references? It's a movie. No! Because, uh, I mean, that, that's something that Disney movies have always done. How they'll have, you know, the, most of their old school uh, animated films take place in earlier ages. And they have, they at some point, usually, they have a fairly modern reference or, I guess, icon or something in there. And it's just because it's a movie. It's not supposed to completely be accurate. It's a cartoon. No, you've bested me with your logic. And... There's this other thing that uh, happened that a lot of people would uh, point to. Uh, it's a scene where uh, uh, Raja was, uh, I guess, like trying to push away Aladdin on that scene on the balcony, uh, where he uh, Aladdin mumbles something as Jasmine is trying as it was leaving, uh, and a lot of people believe he said, "Good girls take off their clothes." You've never heard that? No, I don't. I don't know what you're talking about. When when do people think that he said that? It was in this. It was in the scene on the balcony when Jasmine was about to run away, and then uh, uh, Raja was like pulling at his clothes. Um. Well, all I remember him saying is "down, kitty, good, kitty." Like I don't remember him saying anything like that. Yeah, it's it, they might have removed it in the Disney Plus version. I think that might be why. Um, mm, I highly doubt that's true. <laughs> I I don't believe that's true either, because I, I know people like to make up stuff like that just to cause controversy. Like some people like to, I can't remember which one it was, but I feel like there was something that someone made up. There was like this image in a certain movie that was like super inappropriate, but it wasn't actually there. Someone had just like planted that. Oh, I think that was the Rescuers. But no, that actually was real. I oh, think. okay. Uh, oh, there was that whole legend. Anywho, anywho, I don't think that's true. Yeah. I feel like I would have noticed. I feel like I might have noticed that. Yeah, I, I agree with you on that. Plus, I think, I know that uh, uh, Clemens and Musker did go on record in saying that's not what he said. What he said was actually, please get off of my clothes or let go of my clothes. Mm -hmm. So... So there it is, myth busted, kaboom, we did it. <laughs> so, uh, what do you, what is, uh, what do you think of the Jafar character? Oh, I think Jafar is a great villain. Like, um, he's, I think he is more of the Iago character, definitely. So maybe that's why the parrot is called Iago because you have, uh, you have, uh. Jafar kind of like working with the Sultan in order to betray the Sultan. Um, so I think he's a lot of I think he's a lot of fun because he's not quite he's not quite so one dimensional as some of the other Disney villains. Like he has comedic moments um, while he's also being evil. So I think that makes him 
even more interesting. I also think it's interesting how he kind of has like a thing for Jasmine, which is really weird, but also makes him a more intriguing character. Yeah, that was very odd. Um, so it was kind of funny because the idea of marrying Jasmine didn't come across until Iago suggested it. So, but then again, mm-hmm. he did he did try to wish that Jasmine would fall in love with him, which well, was I mean, also she's a gorgeous princess. Why not? Oh yeah, um, and she does have that hourglass figure, and and she was trapped in an hourglass. Uh, yep. What could it mean? So, um, now I know that uh, the entire concept of Jafar is like the other characters with their concept of freedom and all that. He also has it, but it's like this twisted version of it about achieving his freedom no matter who it hurts or by uh, any means possible. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and that's why he wanted to become like the Sultan so he can have like the freedom and the power to do whatever he wants. And yeah. Uh, have you ever read The Count of Monte Cristo? I've seen the movie. Uh, okay. And there's a scene in Aladdin that looks like it was lifted from The Count of Monte Cristo where, mm-hmm. where uh, Aladdin was in the dungeon. And then there's an old man who was like, Oh, I know a way to get oh, out. Oh, yeah, that does seem a lot like Count of Monte Cristo. Exactly, exactly. Uh, except uh, the old man wasn't uh, uh, secretly the evil vizier. And, yeah. <laughs> and then and then they got him, the, the diamond in the rough. What did you think about, like, the first scene? Like, not the, the scene with the uh, merchant, but the scene with uh, Jafar and the Cave of Wonders and all that. introduction to the story because you're not right I think it's interesting because you're not right away introduced to the main character so you're left with all of these questions and stuff so it really hooks the viewer in so I think that's fun because you're meeting the bad guy right away so there's no question there and so you're kind of wondering oh my goodness where is this going to go next so I think it's a great introduction I think and it shows so you right away that Jafar does not care about anybody except himself oh yeah and uh like that scene really freaked me out as a kid. I thought it was really <laughs> scary, so I would always skip it to like the next scene where the, where Aladdin's like, "Oh, I stole oh, a loaf funny. of bread." Yeah. So, um, what do you? How do you think the live action remake treated the original? Okay, I did not like the live action remake. I did not think it was very good. Really? Uh, explain. Well. <laughs> It wasn't so much, I guess it's just because, first off, the vibe that I got from this movie is that if you had not seen the original animated movie, you would have no clue what was going on. And um, and the way it was put together, it just, it wasn't very good narrative-wise, at least I don't feel like it was, because it felt very rushed, like they were rushing to kind of, they rushed basically through the story just to get to Will Smith being the genie. And they kind of wrote him in sort of extraneous kind of parts into the story. So the story, I just felt, was a little haphazard because they were trying to change so much and jam so much in. And they kind of got rid of more of the charm of the charm that was in the original movie. Now, I know there's a lot of discussion about, like, how it's more culturally sensitive, but I'm kind of putting that aside the point. From a narrative standpoint, it is not as strong as the original, uh, the original film. Yeah, I agree. Um, and you said something about uh, cultural sensitivity. Like, how do you think this film, like the original, handled the Arabic culture? Well, I am not Middle Eastern, so I do not know. I don't have an experience growing up in that culture, so I only know from what I've like learned through books, through you know, through schooling and all that. And since it was made. I'm guessing primarily by people who did not grow up in that culture, I'd say it's fairly likely that they got some of it wrong. Because, again, they're not very close to that culture. They're kind of just drawing from what they do know. And so I know there's some complaints that, like, maybe they, I guess they, they complain about the fact that I guess the guy in the the marketplace wanted to chop off Jasmine's hand. But, I mean, that's just historically accurate. And that wasn't just true in the Arabic nations. That was true in, like, a bunch of nations that they would cut off your hand if you stole something. Yeah. So, I mean, personally, uh, I mean, like, again, I, I don't, 
I'm not close enough to the situation to know how respectful or disrespectful it is. But I feel like, honestly, the the story itself doesn't so much focus on the culture itself. It's kind of just an adventure story put into the context of that culture. So I don't, I mean, I, I think it's, I think you kind of have to see the movie for what it is. It was a different time period, and it's not focusing on the culture. It's just focusing on a story within the context of that culture. Yeah, that's true. Um, like how they were in like in a doing the magic carpet ride thing, and they go to like China and Greece and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and like I heard about this thing called uh, Alibaba Land, which a lot of people associate this film of being guilty of, which is like okay. this, uh, this whole idea of Arabic culture with the, uh, women in like the belly dancers and the pillows strewn around and the opium dens and all that kind of stuff, uh, okay. which was all made up by British, uh, British explorers because they went there and it was pretty boring. They're like, Oh, it's the desert. Uh, we need to spice things up. So they wrote all that in their journals. So that's where that whole came, thing came from. So a lot of people uh, accuse Aladdin for being like a perpetrator of Alibaba land. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, they didn't do much better at that in the newer movie. So. <laughs> well, yeah, I can't argue with that. Um, yeah, so. Speaking of the new movie, like, how do you think Will Smith compares to Robin Williams? I think he did the best he could with what he was given. Again, I don't think the writing was very strong, and they were kind of just relying on his star power to sort of carry some of these not-so-funny lines. And, I mean, he had really big shoes to fill. There was no... I mean, the, the expectation was already ridiculously high because um, because uh, Rob Williams set such a high standard. So, I mean... I think he did the best he could with what he had, but even a superstar can't make um, certain lines sound good if they're not very strong. That is that is very true. And uh, so, would if Robert Williams was still alive, do you think he would have reprised his role? Um, I mean, I wouldn't have been surprised if they had used them, used him. But given how old he would have been, it it would have been different so i don't i don't know if they would have gone ahead and do, done that I, I don't know yeah that's true uh so what do you think uh, like final thoughts of aladdin what's your final thoughts i mean i like aladdin i think it's a real good movie yeah i th i agree i think it's one of the uh best films that disney came out with especially during the renaissance uh yeah and i would recommend you go watch it do you recommend it Okay, great. Um, what rating would you give it? Um, I'd say I'd give it an 8 out of 10. Oh, that sounds great. I would give it a 10 out of 10. Cool. Lol. All right, so that's all we have for today. That's that's Aladdin for you. I've been uh, Nathaniel Avila. This has been Timbrel Hildebrand. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.